I want to know about the personal brand piece. And I'm interested because I imagine my mind goes, well, I imagine that, you know, people coming out of university, that personal brand is going to be much more important because yeah. there is, um, because they've not yet got the body of work or yeah. the, I mean, it's easy when you go, oh, I work for here, 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 tick, tick, tick. And you can go, great. I've got some references from some cool people. Yeah, great. Okay. But before, at the point at which you're coming out of university, you've got very little other than that grade. I, I'm interested whether you think it's changed in the last five years, what you would deem to be personal brand. So you're talking about being authentic and yeah. being out there. Where does the line stop? Like, let's say I'm out there party. I mean, you know, I know a drunken picture is always, is never going to be perfect, is it? That's authentic to another degree. Where do you think there's a crossing of the line or where can there be a crossing of the line when it comes to reputation on social media and, and building a brand? Yeah, very good question. I think, I think people get confused between personal and private. Mm. I think you can, you can express a personal brand, but things that are private to you that you do not want other people to, to know or should be kept private. It's as simple as that. But I think, you know, showing showing some personality and being personally vulnerable, I think is only going to help. I'm yet to see a, um, a work related post on any social media, unless it's been a life event where people have maybe secured a training contract or they've done something significant. Any business related post will never outperform a vulnerable personal post now because people oh. want to learn from the other people. Right. Or they want to see something connected to themselves. Um, and so I say with the personal brand, allow yourself to allow yourself to be you because you're unique. There's, there's no copy of you and everyone has a story. So you may think your story is boring. You may not think you have anything to share. You do. People do have things to share. Yeah, that was definitely, definitely the message that I've got previously. And, and OK, what are the challenges that you think? So you were talking about there are some kind of things under the surface that people are, I guess, those limiting beliefs or those things that are stopping them from getting from A to B like what what things have you seen in your own life that made you go that was something I, I've overcome particularly relating to your podcast but I'm, I'm, I'm curious in business generally I think there's everyone has an element of self-doubt I think everyone has a lack of uh, some form of, you know, confidence, not maybe something, didn't, maybe you got a rejection for a training contract, maybe something happened where um, a deal fell flat, or maybe some form of rejection. So I think there's always an element of self doubt. Um, and so for me, it's trying to bring out that positive mindset in people. And the best way to do that is to surround yourself with positive people. You are the sum of the parts that people you surround yourself with. So I highly encourage people to to find those mentors, to find those positive people, to bring the best out of you. Because if you're in a negative space or you're feeling vulnerable or you've got periods of self-doubt, that's completely fine. But just go and find people that can help you. After that quick short break, <laughs> coming back, I want to ask you about thought leadership. You mentioned it earlier. Yeah. Have you, hmm, I don't know whether to ask you of specific names. Do you know of specific names in the legal profession that you would deem to be thought leaders? And what is it that determines, what do you mean when you say thought leader? What does that mean? Yeah, I think that's a really good question. I think there are um, people out there that I see as, as, as thought leaders and it can be a different way. So there can be thought leaders that are purely influential in terms of the quality of the work that they do and the transactions and the deals that they've done because those people that are sharing that experience is great but then there's also people um, who are thought leaders when it comes to things like social media so um, you know Saha Faruqi for example um, is doing a wonderful job um, on LinkedIn you know he's uh, he's set up his own chambers within um, DAC they're doing a wonderful job and he's documenting his story and showing his vulnerability and being human and being himself and so he would be seen as a sort of modern day barrister that's um 
being human on social media and showing that thought leadership and information sharing. So I think there's two sides. There's people that, you know, are, are, are doing the deals and thought leaders in that space. There's people in the um, social media digital space. And I think everyone has a has a place. So I, I would encourage people to find mentors that you're drawn to. And it's so easy now, in my opinion, to get mentors with platforms like LinkedIn, with all of these digital channels, because you can reach out to these people. You can engage with these people. You can tap into their communities. So I really feel like now particularly for aspiring lawyers and barristers there's so much opportunity to acquire knowledge at your fingertips i'm really seeing a lot of the um the people that are speaking out being quite unique and and having yeah. their own unique stamp we i think we were talking last time about uh the the guys in the states on clubhouse the yeah. ones the cbd uh, you know kind of background they're unique. They've got their own. They've all got their own little brand. And how yes. Alice Stevenson, I always saw, see her. She she talks about Alice, being, yes, right. She she seems to be everywhere, and I love her style. She talks. She was talking the other day about not drinking, and uh, having tattoos, and being a, a young mum. All of those things for me. A allow a bit more diversity into you know coming in, but it will also break those break those molds of you have to be a certain way in order to be a lawyer actually if you're smart I mean, you don't probably need to be that smart either <laughs> if you've got the ability that the hanging power to do it then you could you could get through those exams and you can work I mean, as i was saying Hannah she was she was explaining it's five years out of six year apprenticeship and you could become a lawyer these are things I didn't even know in fact I didn't even know that the LPC had changed to it the SQE so there you go it shows how outdated my my yeah. knowledge is. But it's well, a really good point because there are thought leaders, as you say, like Alice. I would say also Jody Hill does a great job with Thrive Law because she's trying to promote diversity, inclusion, and mental health. And that, you know, I always say with whenever you're trying to drive change, it has to be from top down. It has to be with the people at the top that are really because then that feeds down through the, the organization. So it's, if the leaders are prepared to do that, like an Alice, like a Jody or a Jessica Hampson, who's doing a great job with CEO solicitors, you know, people before profits, you know, all of these things are so, so, so important. So, yeah, I, I really do encourage more of those thought leaders to, to come out of the woodwork. So there's nothing taboo except no. for the private. You think just. Yeah. There is, and, and that fear, I mean, for me, that was it. Like there is always, before I step into something and, and being online or doing videos, I enjoy it, but I was like, mm, but I shouldn't, mm, maybe not yeah. on LinkedIn. Yeah, Facebook, people say that, yeah. but uh, LinkedIn is not what people think it was. I yeah. agree. Yeah. LinkedIn is, I would treat LinkedIn as this. The, the newsfeed is the pub, right? You're in basically the social pub. People are producing content. It's so, so noisy in there. And then you're going to see something you like. You're going to click onto that. And then that's going to take you to their table at the pub. Mm. And then you get to know about their ecosystem and what conversations happening on there. It's like you go into the pub and you see lots of people around. You're not going to go and talk to people you don't like or you don't see. So again, similarly with your feed, it's noisy place right now. It's a social media platform. You know, people forget this. Yes, it's a professional networking, but it's changed. People want to see what the humans are behind the jobs as well as people producing the jobs.